magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. But Pharaoh, his heart grew harder and he did not heed them, just as the Lord had said. You know, when some people see the finger of God and you try to share with them that this is God, they actually respond in a negative way. Their hearts become hard. And every time you hear the Word of God, you're going to respond to the Word of God or you're going to react to the Word of God. Something's going to happen to your heart when you hear the Word of God. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter 2. Let's see when they heard the Word of God in Acts chapter 2. Peter gets full of the Holy Spirit and he preaches on the day of Pentecost and he talks about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He begins to share and he says in verse 36 of Acts chapter 2, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified. Both Lord and Christ. Now that's a, that's a pretty good rebuke, isn't it? Y'all just killed Jesus, the, the Son of God, but God has made Him Lord and Christ. He's the Messiah and you killed Him. And when they heard this, look at the next scripture, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they heard. When people hear the Word of God, something happens in their heart. When they heard this, they were cut to the heart. You know what cut to the heart means? They were convicted by the truth. And when you hear the truth, when people watch on television or when you witness to them, what's going to happen, there's going to come a time as they're listening that they're, something's going to cut to their heart. Now, if their hearts become hard, it's hard to cut. And every time they hear the gospel and deny it and don't respond to it, the harder that heart is. And then if you keep telling them about it, then they're going to treat you like Pharaoh did Aaron and Moses. They're going to want to kill you. Do you realize that? They will actually begin to hate you because you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ if they keep hearing and not doing and not responding to the gospel. But these folks, thank God... They, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, isn't this wonderful when you're witnessing and you're living for Jesus and you're talking about Jesus and they say to you, what shall we do? What do I need to do? I mean, I was listening to these tapes one, one day, 21 years ago, and, 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 and this friend of mine was sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with me, and it was cutting to my heart, and I would go home and I'd think about it, and I'd go back the next day and I'd listen to it again, and I'd go home and think about it. And then after about three days, I looked at him and I said, what do I need to do? And he says, you need to repent and ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. And right there in the backyard of my mom's house, we grabbed hands and prayed. But there was something going on and I had to make a decision. Am I going to respond to the truth of the gospel? And that's what happened right here. Peter's preaching. And, and listen, sometimes you've got to say hard things to people. But it's the truth. And it cuts to their heart. And they might say, well, who do you think you are? Well, I know who I am. I am a son of God. And I don't need you to tell me I'm a son of God to know I'm a son of God. God told me I'm His son and it doesn't matter what you say. Amen. Do you all realize that when Jesus came and, and He was baptized by, by John in the Jordan, He came up out of the water, the Father, the heavens opened, and the Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. He didn't get up and go find twelve disciples to validate who He was. He went into the wilderness and proved who He was. Tempted by the devil. And he came out of the wilderness taking his place in the Spirit. And it says he came out in the power of the Spirit. And then he went and he picked twelve disciples. Not for the twelve disciples to come around and say, Oh, you are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. You are... No, they kept doubting the whole time. He says, How long am I going to be with you and you still don't know who I am? One day, he was preaching, and 70 of them left, and he turned to the other 12. He says, y'all want to go too? 
He knew who He was and He didn't need the twelve disciples to tell Him He was the Son of God, the Messiah. He knew He was the Son of God, the Messiah. And you need to know by the Spirit of God that you are a child of God and you are a son and a daughter of God. So when everybody else and the devil and your husband and your wife and your children say, Oh, you can't be a child of God. You say, I am a child of God. Or if you're a child of God, turn these stones into bread. He said, I ain't going to do that. Not me. No. I, you know, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm getting a hold of the word. Do you realize Jesus lived his whole life getting full of the word before he was baptized in the Holy Spirit and used it? We get saved and we think we're going to, you know, swing over the, over hell and spit in the eye of the devil and say, and take authority over him. We don't even know the word of God. We just do a little bit of church. God anoints His Word out of a vessel that's full of His Holy Spirit. When I got born again, you know what I did? I got a hold of a Bible and I couldn't even read. And I got a hold of some tapes and I put those tapes in and I began to listen to someone read as I followed in the Word until I learned how to read the Bible. And I kept learning the Bible and studying the Bible and I still study it today because in it is life. And whenever the devil comes, the circumstances come, or something comes against me, I know how to respond because I know the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit brings that to my remembrance. What I already have on the inside of me. Put it on the inside of you when you don't need it, so that when you do need it, it will come out of you. Amen. Instead of waiting for the, the fight to come and then trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Ooh, that's good. Go with me to Acts chapter 7. Well, he told them what to do. He says, repent. While y'all going there, let me finish reading that over here. I'm jumping ahead. Uh, it, when he says, he's the Peter and the rest of the apostles, men, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There's the answer right there. Amen. What do you do? Repent. Receive Jesus Christ. Get full of the Holy Spirit. Get baptized. Begin to live this thing. Look at verse, chapter 7. Now Stephen right here is preaching. Look at verse 51. You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ear. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Now, now that, that's a pretty serious sermon, huh? He's in front of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the... The, you know, uh, the religious people, and he's, he's telling them, you stiff-necked people. The pastor, take it easy. Uncircumcised and hard and ear. You always resist the Holy Spirit. He wants you to go and witness. He wants you to go preach. He wants you to obey the Word. He wants you to get out of sin. But you resist Him. Uh, as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers. That's pretty rough stuff, isn't it? Who have received the law by direction of angels, but have not kept it. And when they heard these things, they heard. They were cut to the heart. See, when people hear it cuts to their heart, but look at what these old, these old boys did, these religious guys. They gnashed their, they gnashed at him with their teeth. <laughs> That's what they did. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. Oh, the veil must have been a little bit thinner for him that day, right? The veil that separated us from the eternal realm was beginning to move out of the way and because something was going on here because he was going to be a witness. He was going to preach the gospel and he didn't care what the other people thought. He only cared about being full of the Holy Ghost and representing Jesus Christ. And he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look! I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. He was, Jesus was standing up that day checking him out. Look, there's my boy. Hallelujah! Because he was testifying. He was telling the truth. He was living a life full of the Holy Spirit. 
And if you were to li if you read chapter seven, you would hear his sermon. This old boy knew the word.